we're, we're going to talk about logarithms today in two varieties. We're going to talk about the basic elements and how you rearrange it, how you solve for x and things like that, and then we're going to talk about how to graph it in its basic form. So to, let me just give an example first. Um, I don't remember, or I don't try to memorize the formula for this kind of thing. What I do try to do is I remember one set of exponentials and logs. Exponential equations are the inverses of logs and vice versa. Okay, so this is what I remember. Log base 2 of 8 is 3, and then I also remember that 2 cubed equals 8. Are they learning the same thing next time? What was the one eighth? Similar things, yes. Hmm? Now, we're going to look. Well, let me just. Let me give you the titles of these. Yes, ma'am. Um, isn't there something where you can like label the different numbers, like A, B, and C, and they're just arranged differently? Or is, this, or is that something else? It's like this. You see the, the 2, the 3, and the 8? They're all the same things. They're, they're connected that way. Look at the different names. There are two forms. These forms are very important when we go to solve these equations. Because if I give you a log equation and ask you to solve for x, you're going to turn it into exponential. If I give you exponential, in order to solve it, you're probably going to have to go to logarithmic form. You always go to the other form to solve. We're not going to do the logarithmic form yet, but we are going to, or the exponential form and solve it. We're going to need to do that in the traditional form. And so, sorry. Thank what I want you to do, I'm going to write an example here, and I, I want you to just solve it. it. It's not hard. So here it is, log base 5 of 125. Whoa. What is that equal to? Careful. 5 to the 5th power is very, very large. It's 3. Why? Because 5 cubed is 125. Okay. The question was, what power of 5 do we have to go to before it's equal to 125? And so this is the basic way of, of contemplating or thinking about logarithmic equations. They're not hard, especially if you, if you can think about powers of 3s of and 2s and 4s and 5s. We don't really get much bigger than that. If that's something you struggle with, what would be a good thing to do is when you start working on your homework, think about powers. Powers of 2 uh, for the first few are easy, but when it gets up to like 64 or 128 or 256, you might not recognize those. So but you've got a calculator, you're going to have a calculator. You can take that, say, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, or 5 to the 1st, 5 to the 2nd, and so forth, what you're not familiar with. You know, make sure to take advantage of your calculator so that you can know what you're doing. Here's another example, a little bit more challenging. Log base 4 of 0 0.25. Is this the log form exponential thing? Mm -hmm. Log base 4 of 0 0.25. I don't know what I'm I want to raise 4 to a power so that it's equal to 0. 0.25. If I squared it, what's 4 squared? It's negative Never mind, it's 116. You're close, though. 1. 4 to the x equals 1 fourth, right? Yeah. Let me, I know this is easy from here, but let me just rewrite that. That's going to be 4 to the x equals 4 to the negative 1. This is the technique you use to solve equations, especially for ones that you don't know, or worse, that are not perfect multiples. Sometimes you're going to get here, and the answer is a decimal or a fraction. And the only way to get there is to solve it this way. So the technique we use is to make the bases the same, and that way I can set the exponents equal to each other 
and I can find out what x is. Okay, we're not going to do a whole lot of that real difficult stuff today, but that's where we're going with this. Set the bases equal so that you can work it out and set the exponents equal to each other. Let's try <clears throat> another one. Try this one. Log base 6 of 216. The instructions here are simply to evaluate the logarithm. Just tell me what it is. The problem is, if I'm not in base 10 or base E, the calculator, for the most part, is useless. Three. Three. That's exactly correct. Because that would be 6 to the x equals 216. Well, 6 to the x equals 6 cubed, and x equals 3. That's a lot of work, which you don't really have to do. But when it gets to be difficult, and you can't think about it in terms of powers, that's how you'll solve it. And you might end up having 2x equals 3x plus 4. Collect your like terms. If you have exponents with lots of x's and stuff, and we'll get in there. Um, any questions on this? Let's try one more. Log base one half of 64. This one, a little different because you have a base of one half, but don't let it fool you. It's the same kind of thing. And so you can see us working the answer out. X equals negative 6. Okay, let me separate all that. We went ahead, we, we flipped our 2 over to make it 2 to the negative X equals, and I took 64, and I thought, well, what two, 64 is a power of 2, right? How many 2s go into 64? Well, there's 6 of them. So it's 2 to the 6th power. Your first goal is to get the bases to be the same. Once the bases are the same, I can set the exponents equal. And after that, it becomes pretty, pretty basic in terms of just usually solving a linear equation. Find x, get everything on one side, and work it out. Easy. Any questions on solving or evaluating exponential or logarithmic functions? So you didn't want a fraction, so what is it? I did. I took this part. And I made it become this part because if I flip the 2 over, the exponent just simply turns negative. So 2 to the 6 equals 64? Yes, it does. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's look at some other a little weird events. See if you can identify this one. 10 raised to the log of 9.6. Now, I've kind of mixed them. I'm giving you a exponential equation that has a logarithmic exponent. You can mix them and twist them and turn them. What's the base of the log on the page? Is this that E thingy? No, but that's definitely related to this. Is it 9.6? It is 9.6. But what's the log? What base of the log are we using here? I didn't write it down, did I? No, you're right, it's 10. Okay? If the log is not written, it's automatically 10. This is what we call the common log. The common log means you have a base 10. It will not be written. It will never be written. In fact, generally, they may even state, we're going to use common logs. Okay? And you're just supposed to know, oh, that's base 10. The only other base is base E, and that's called a natural log. So you could have like y equals ln x, and, and we will see that too. Um, natural log is a base E, so this is natural. What's that in x? Ln x, natural log. It's the logarithm of the natural function. So natural log, I don't know why ln is backwards, but so this is base E. If you look on your calculator, it's log and ln are right next to each other. Okay? Your, your calculator does the natural log, it does base E, and it does base 10, but it doesn't, unless you have an updated version of a TI-84, uh, for the most part, I don't think, uh, maybe some of the newer calculators will do it, but... 
If you do second, second log, where's your log? Second log, there it is. No, Ellen's right there, underneath it. And what is that okay. for? That's just the natural log. We'll get that to that later. I'm not so worried so much about that, but look up here. This is what I want you to talk. look at. I have an exponent that has a base 10, right? But the base of my exponent is also 10. When you have the exponent and the base... With the same base, the be they the cross same. out, and your answer is just whatever you were taking the log of. For, let, me, let me do another one. What if we had 2 log base 2 of 15? The answer is just 15. Logs cancel out. This is the technique we're going to use when we have uh, variables in our exponent, and I need to solve for x. <laughs> we'll end up having to exponentiate both sides and use logarithms or take the log of both sides and we'll do those so later. could you plug that into your calculator with the log too? No. Because it's a, if it's base, if it's something different than a base 10 or base E, then your calculator is almost useless. Don't erase that yet. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's talk about graphing. So get... Draw an uh, axis <laughs> like this. For now, we're only going to use the pods. What we're going to graph today is just the generic, just the, the real basic form. We're going to look at y equals log. We're going to do base 2 since it's a lot easier to think about of x. Every base has its own parent function. Base 2, base 3, base 10, base e, all of them are just like 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 10 to the x. Just like with, with our exponential forms, we had all kind of parent functions. Okay, every base changes the parent. But the format is going to stay the same. And I'm going to give you the generic coordinates to plot. So it doesn't matter what you start with. If you know the base, you know exactly what it, the graph is going to look like. All right? The problem is, the problem is that we don't really get logs of base 2. Like if I said log base 2 of, of 3, you would have absolutely no idea how to calculate that. Right. Most of you couldn't calculate that even with a calculator because your calculator just won't do it. So when we go to think about coordinates, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to think about, well, exponential graphs and logarithmic graphs are inverses of each other. That's why we found the inverse to start with at the beginning of class. We are going to choose the x-coordinates, or sorry, the y-coordinates for this one. When we, did, when we graphed exponentials, you graph the x's and then plug it in to find the y. Well, because we are better at exponentials, we're going to kind of stick with that idea. And we're just going to flip-flop the, the way we select them. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to rewrite that logarithm as an exponential form. So it's going to be 2 to the y equals x. Is that over? No, 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 not over. And this is what? This, that y, or 2 to the y equals x, that's just going to help me find the actual x coordinate. Okay? So to choose my y's, this is what we're going to go with. We're going to go with negative 1, 0, and one. Those are our three favorites. And, and you'll find out real quick that this is going to be kind of common. This is going to happen. You, you're going to see the, this is, for, for any logarithm graph, you're going to start with these points. Now, if I've transformed it, if I've said, let's shift it left so many and down so many or up so many, then you're probably not going to want to use negative one, zero, and one anymore. But these, remember how we graphed the original parent graph and we just shifted those points? Yeah. Yeah, that was That's probably going to be the best and easiest way to graph logs. Okay? Because there's so many points that you can pick that you won't be able to work out. You won't know their number. Is and, the 2 to the y, is that the inverse of the y log 2? Right. Okay. Uh, oh, it's just the exponential form of it. So let me ask you this. 2 to the negative 1 is what? One half. Two to the zero. One. Two. Two to the one. 
let's go ahead, since we have our coordinates, let's go ahead and graph these. So here will be negative 1, 1, this will be 1, 2, 3. So about 1 half, negative 1 is somewhere right in here. Then we have 1, 0, and then 2, 1. And you can kind of get the general idea of what's going to happen here. Is it, gonna, is it like linear? No, it's definitely got a curve to it. Let me ask you this. At this point, you're not really sure what happens close to the y-axis. Can you plug a point? Can you plug a point into y? Take the exponential part. Can you plug a point into y, a number into y, and make the x negative? Can we go across the y-axis? Wait. Think, just think, think about it. Can I, plug, can I plug a number into this y value and make this x become negative? No. Sure. Then share that number with me. I don't know. Okay. Sure. Never. Is that a number? Okay. You can't. Exponents, exponents do not have the power to change a positive number into a negative. Now, if I started with a negative, I can, go, I can change the signs. But if I start with a positive value, there's no way for me to change it to a negative value simply by changing its exponent. Because I'm multiplying itself times. It's like taking a positive number and multiplying itself times a bunch of positives and end up with a negative number. That doesn't make any sense. So, you have an asymptote. That asymptote is the y-axis. So it's right here. Vertical. That's right. We have a vertical asymptote right at the y-axis. So my vertical asymptote is x equals 0. That's the same. That's true for all x, uh, logarithmic graphs. Okay, now, if I shift left or right any, then my vertical asymptote shifts that far as well. Does asymptote has it have a p in it? Yes, it does. It's a weird number, weird name. So let me go ahead and draw my graph now that we've got it kind of. It goes down, 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 gets really, really, really close to the x to the y-axis, never touches it, and it goes up and it goes over and it keeps growing and growing and growing, but it grows very slowly over time. Just the opposite of exponentials. Exponentials start to grow very slowly and they get really, really fast. Okay. Logarithmic growth is just the opposite. It goes extremely fast at the beginning, and then it slows down and slows down, and it continues to slow down. But it, always, it grows, but it slow, it, it grow, its growth slows and slows and slows and slows forever, but never stops. <laughs> and so you, there you see the graph of y equals log base 2 of x. That is definitely a parent function. I'm going to put one up with the transformation in it, and I want you to, to graph it. Any questions about this one? Okay. Here. <coughs> graph this one. Y equals log base 3 of x minus 1. You graph that one. Here we go. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to graph the original points. Or I'm not going to graph them, but I'm going to write the original coordinates down, and I'm going to adjust them. So well, the first thing we want to talk about, what are the generic points, regardless of my base, that we're going to do? So let's look at that. So we have x and y. The y coordinates are going to be pretty consistent. Negative 1, 0, and 1. Now. For generic, for just any base period, let's say base B, so that we don't have a number attached. Here's what it's going to be. 1 over B, it's going to be 1, and it's going to be B. B is the base of your log. That's 3 now, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and, and write out the actual coordinates for this one. So this is going to be 1 third, negative 1, 1 0, and 3 0. 
So this applies to the problem at hand, but what are we doing to everything? Wait, what? Why is there two zeros and a Y? Oops, that was my bad. Okay. Here we go. So what we're going to do now, what is the minus one effect? Does it affect the X or the Y coordinates? It's, it's shifting it which way? Up or down, left or right? It's shifting it to the right one. So right one means add one to all of your X coordinates. So the new coordinates we're going to have will be here. So I'm just simply going to add one to everything. So it's going to be one and one third. It's going to be two and what? Four. And four. So it'll be negative one, zero, and one. So I'm going to go ahead. First thing I'm going to do, since I shifted to the right, if you move left to right, the first thing you adjust is your asymptote. So let's go ahead and put that asymptote in place so that I don't mess it up. What is that? Add one to the X? Um, yep. I shifted everything to the right one. So now we'll go back in and let's plot our points. So we have, let's see, here's one. So there's negative one, positive one. So this would be one, two, three, four. So my coordinates would be one and one third, negative one. So that's somewhere right in here. And then we have two, zero, and we have four, one. Just like it looked last time. Just move down a little bit. So let's just kind of talk about this is really the important piece. Those are the generic coordinates. That's your starting place on any graph of any log. If you remember that, graphing with logarithms is real simple. Okay. Any questions on, on graphing with logs or simplifying with logs? Yeah. Go ahead. How do you determine the vertical asymptote? The vertical asymptote is determined. Well, first of all, it's always zero to start with. It's y. It's x equals zero. So this asymptote is x. Oops. This is x equals one. Your horizontal shift is your asymptote. Okay. Oh, so you can get it from the equation. <coughs> okay. So the horizontal shift is the actual vertical asymptote. In this case, we shifted one to the right, so zero plus one is one. X equals one. You draw it in, and you got it. Yes, sir. Will there ever be a horizontal asymptote? Not for logs. Okay. Exponentials, yes. Okay. Okay. Any questions? All right. Let me give you your homework, and then we're going to review. So here's your. It's page one forty-seven. It's numbers one through twelve and twenty-two through twenty-four. Solving equations, using logs, and uh, going ahead and using the basic graph and graphing logs. And that's your homework. Let's review real quick. You got that down? Megan, you got this down? Let's change it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding now. <laughs> uh,